All right, Sandy, what the heck is gonna happen on this episode of Trying Something New? Well, recently we spent 30 days in the Philippines, traveled all over, and we want to share with you the top places that you should visit in the Philippines. Thirty days may seem like a long time to spend in a place, but take into consideration that the Philippines has over 7,000 islands. That's a lot of islands. Yeah. We had so much fun that we will be going back to explore as much as we possibly can. And the people were so amazing and so warm and welcoming that we are just drawn back to that place no matter what. So is this like a top 10 list or what are we doing here? So you know what, we decided. We're not gonna do it in any particular order because they're all so amazing that I can't really rate them and everyone has their own likes and what they're into. So, so we're gonna start with El Nido. It was the first place that we visited and it was sort of our intro to the Philippines. Super cute island. I love the rusticness of it. It hasn't been it's completely developed yet. So it was a, a really fun vibe. What'd yeah, you think? Yeah, I, I love the fact that everywhere you go, they say there's no Wi-Fi on the island, so it's time to connect. That is a huge deal. <laughs> if you really need cool. Wi-Fi. No Wi-Fi. Well, there is Wi-Fi, but there's it, no it Wi-Fi. It doesn't work very good. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. Pre-plan if you need to upload videos or if you yeah. need to do anything online or work remotely. Cause... If you're a vlogger, you might want to get your own little hotspot or you need to work because, yeah, it don't depend on the Wi-Fi there. So there's two spots that we kind of found in El Nido. There's the downtown bustling hub area, and then there's kind of uptown, I guess I would call it. I don't know if that's the official term or not, but we like to stay out of the craziness because it gives you a little bit of breathing room, and you can walk outside and just kind of be, instead of just walking outside and being and right a... <laughs> in the middle of the craziness. Yeah. So we stayed uptown in this little place called... Novi's. Novi's. Really cute, great little spot. Um, bugs on me. So when we got to El Nido, we couldn't necessarily go on any of the tours, which is one of the main reasons that you go to El Nido, because there was a the huge storm out in the ocean and the waves were pretty crazy. So the Coast Guard stepped in and shut down the tours for Everything four days. Everything water related, related <laughs> was shut down for like five days. So you got to get creative. We went to Nakpon we Beach. We went to Nakpon Beach, which is where Jimmy crashed the drone. So we went to Nakpon Beach. Sandy told me not to crash the drone. Not to fly the drone. When I flew the drone, I <laughs> ended up crash it either. crashing the drone. And if you want, you can check out the video. Which side is it going to be on? Let's this go side? Put it there. Right, yeah. that side. <laughs> so so yeah. after Nag Pond Beach, which was really cool, you could definitely go back to Nag Pond Beach. Thing. Was really beautiful. It was a little crazy with the wind, so the water was rough, but it was a beautiful beach. Very beautiful. So on our last day in El Nido, the water was open, and we were the boat tours were on. So needless to say, every single <laughs> boat was out there. There goes the rooster. Every single boat was on the water, and that's where we recommend getting a private boat tour. Because if you're on a regular tour with other people and whatnot, you kind of have to go in order to the where they're gonna take you. And with the way it went that day, it was packed every single location. So imagine everybody in El Nido wanted to go on a boat tour that had been there for four or five days, so they're all going the first day yes. that it opens up. So there was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people on the boat tour. And then we got out there and the water started getting a little choppy too, so we definitely understood why the Coast Guard shut it down because yes. that was a little sketchy for a minute. I appreciated that call. <laughs> but, but anyways. It was truly amazing. El Nido, definitely a, a must-see spot in, in, in the Philippines. And do a private boat tour. If, you, if, if there's a bunch of you, do a private tour because that way you can stay as long as you want in certain destinations. Like, if the, like our kids, if they're having fun, I don't want to say, all right, it's time to go. And they're like, no. Your 45 so, minutes is up, kid. We I gotta like hit being, the next spot. Yeah, I like being in control of our own tour. So it's a little more expensive and lunch is typically not included. So think about that, but I recommend private boat tour. So it was time to leave El Nido. So we had to hit up the next spot. What was the next spot that we went to in the Philippines? The next spot was Coron. Coron was pretty cool. I really liked Coron. There was a very, uh, there's a lot of stuff to do there, it seems like. A lot of adventure stuff. I mean, not there's stuff to do in the city, but there's more adventure stuff if you actually dig in and try to go out of the city and do some cool stuff. And we did a boat tour there, where we got a private oh, boat again. The boat tour there was oh, amazing. It was really cool. Where did we see? Kayangan Lake. I don't even remember. Barracuda Lake. Twin Lagoons. The water um, was so epic. Oh, oh, it, it was crazy. beautiful. It gives me goosebumps just thinking about that water, oh, right? Really I know, right? I'm serious. <laughs> it, it, was, it was super fun. And then we did an island tour, which we have videos on that as well. Um, the I'm island not... tour, we went to Mount Tapias, 
which is where you climb. How many stairs was it? Uh, 700 and something. 700 stairs. Hey, there is the a top. video to that, right? Where the do you want to put it? Cor let's put it here. Right, video for that right, right there. there. All right, back up. So, uh, it was really fun. The kids really liked it. When you get to the top, it's just a gorgeous view. Amazing. It was beautiful. Definitely recommend doing that. After that, we went to the hot springs. Oh, I what, a, what, what do you a think? great way to end the day. I recommend right? the hot springs at night because it's pretty warm. It, the temperature outside is pretty warm. At night, it cools down a little bit, and so the hot springs feels really nice. And so if, after a long day of touring and hiking and exploring and eating, I mean, what a better way. It was like 8 o'clock at night. We went to the hot springs. We settled in there and just really relaxed. Cool. Oh, God. It was amazing. Besides the 30-minute ride back to the hotel, which half of it was on dirt roads that were <laughs> crazy. And so just so you know, <laughs> the roads to get there are kind of rough. They were paving we did them over in a, there, though. We did it in a tricycle, oh, and it was oh, 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 oh. Yeah, it, it, was, uh, it was pretty funny. There was a cool waterfall we went to there, too. You remember the name of the waterfall? Concepcion Falls. Concepcion Falls. That was pretty fun. So there's a lot of it's little. It's a small waterfall. So yeah. if you're thinking, I think in my head, I was like, epic, oh, we're going to go see waterfall. this epic waterfall. And we got there and it was like this big, <laughs> maybe a little bigger, but I was like, so. Corone but, was amazing. Yes. And there's a lot of stuff to do in Corone. Uh, yeah, the and really cute town. We Where did we stay in Corone? We actually got, met a guy named Eric that picked us up at the dock the first day. You know, they all kind of wait on the dock yes. to see if you need a ride. Eric and, was amazing. And this guy ended up saying, hey, tomorrow if you need a ride, hit me up on WhatsApp. So we hit him up and then the next day he's like, hey, tomorrow if you need a ride. So we ended up creating a great relationship with Eric. And then Eric uh, said, hey, my buddy owns a fishing boat. If you want, we could take the fishing boat out for the day. And you guys could have your own private tour and take as long as you want, blah, blah, blah. And man, what a great time that was. I really recommend if you can hook up with a local, one of the drivers, and get a relationship with them going because they can give you all the inside information that normally you can, you know, yeah. you don't want to go to the hotel concierge for that yeah, kind of stuff. all the little tourist trappy things, yeah. uh, you know. Because the local people can get you a better deal. They have more, like you can maybe do more off the beaten path stuff. He even took us to, to the market. Remember the market we went to? So the oh, public the market. The market was insane. The public market so is something fun. to see. Yeah, definitely. Anytime you get in any local public markets, we definitely recommend yeah. it. Because that's where you see how it really goes down. The meat on the table, the cleavers chopping heads off and like fresh veggies that we like. But it's interesting to see all the dead animals. Being <laughs> vegetarian, <laughs> I'm kind of like, whoa. But if you are a meat eater, when you go to those markets, you might and reconsider. Might. And then we saw a pig coming in, right as we're going out, and the kids are like, what's that? I'm like, that's your bacon, kids. That's the bacon, right there. So after we spent a week or so in Koron, we decided to fly over to Cebu. Mm -hmm. Cebu is a big city, and that's where we it's actually- It's a big island. Yeah, big island. That's actually where we bought the drone, because there was, unless we went back to Manila, which we didn't want to do, there was a drone shop in Cebu called Casey's Cameras. We did a bunch of research ahead of time, called in to make sure they had the drone, went there and spent over $1,000 So if anybody crashed the drone. drone, there's hope. You can still get gorgeous drone shots, just yeah. have to drop another $1,000. Just don't crash it, that was a good idea. Don't crash it. All right, so from Cebu, we kind of use that as a launching pad to go to a couple of different places, right? Okay. This is damn bug keeps flying. I know. It's a damn bug on the lens. All right, so we flew into Cebu City, and from there, we spent a night there. Uh, we took a bus ride over to Moabol, which was a really cute town. It's well, how was the bus ride though? Do you remember oh, how the bus ride? Oh, the bus ride was hell. <laughs> a lot of the bus rides in the Philippines were hell. Another thing I recommend is I would just get a, a private car no matter where we go. Yeah, bus drive, bus rides like, I don't know, let's just say 15 bucks for the family, private cars 40 bucks for the family. It may be a little more, but so, in my eyes, it is totally oh, worth it. Oh man, and we got a couple of videos for that too. Which, yes. where, where do you want to put them? Okay, that was the survive the typhoon. Right. So Let's what, put it there. All right, put it over there. Survive the typhoon. <laughs> there was a typhoon when we got into Cebu City during the bus ride going to Moabol. Just watch the video. Our bus driver was crazy. That's all I'm gonna say. All right. So Moabol was super cute. Ooh, Moabol. You know what? I really fell in love with Moabol. I really liked it too. There's a little uh, little fisherman town. One of the highlights that you hear about before you go there is the sardine run. So every day we were staying about a block away from the beach. We would go out to the beach every morning, and you swim out about 30, 40 feet, and there's millions and millions and millions That's of what sardines I love. that I are love, just right there. Yeah, I love that those kind of little things that you can do where it's not like a boat tour or this yeah. or that. It's just you can go in from the shore and just enjoy millions of sardines. Yeah, the true. kids got a kick out of it. It was super fun. And saw a just, couple of sea turtles in they're there. They're always right? there. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sea, turtles. sea turtles. Sea turtles. Sun rays come through, oh, glistening on the sardines. So epic. It was really cool. 
So one thing that we wanted to do while we were in Mobile is experience some local traditions. And uh, as we entered Mobile, there was a cockfighting tournament or cockfighting arena coming into the town. So we definitely put that on our list and we went and checked out the cockfight, which was interesting, overwhelming, and uh, yeah, it was just something. Oh, there's a bug on the lens. Oh no. <laughs> which was interesting. Uh, exciting and just something to behold. So if you're there, I would definitely recommend checking out a cockfighting so another, thing. So but, uh, something that we like to do is, it may be controversial, it may be not acceptable, like in the US where we're coming from, but it's something that they do. And so it's kind of like, it happens, it exists. We're not condoning it, but it was like, let's go check it out and just see. Like, it's what's just this like about? In Hindu countries, they worship the cow. In America, we eat 70 billion cheeseburgers a day. It's the same thing. They might come to our country and go, oh my God, how do you guys eat cows? Uh, shame on you. So, you know, it's everybody's got their own thing, so. And we have a video on the cockfight too. Where do you want to put um, it? It was kind of, let's put it right here. All right, let's put it there. Cockfighting video, check it this out. This fly will not leave me alone. Might learn a lesson or two. So, yeah, yeah it, and people commented, oh, I'm not gonna follow you anymore. You went to a cockfight, hey. That's your choice. Yeah, that's what it is, man. We're, it's your we're, choice. We're just experiencing what the culture has we to offer. We stayed there for about 15 minutes. <laughs> we saw what it was about, and we were out. Yeah. So, what's, anyways, what's, next spot. What's something else we did in Mobile? Kawasan Falls. Oh, that was. It's not awesome. in Mobile, but we took a car from there to Kawasan Falls. Now that, that I was. swear, it was a highlight for, yeah, sure, for sure of all of our Philippines adventures. We made a video of that one too, didn't we? We have a video of that one. I we think have we a have. lot of videos <laughs> from the Philippines. I think we should put it up here. All right, it's right there. Okay, Kawasan Falls, epic, fun, adventurous. So, something I want to tell you about Kawasan Falls is, I we did not know that there was three levels to it. We just saw all the pictures that everybody puts up of the beautiful Gatorade, blue water, and the, the falls. So when we got there, I saw it and I thought, oh, it's beautiful. Had no idea that there was two more levels which have rope swings, oh, man. multiple rope swings. A, a, a natural water slide. A natural rock water slide. So it was amazing. It is a little treacherous getting up there. Which is half the fun though. We, oh, it's super fun. <laughs> but the little bamboo bridges that they make to get across the it's rocks. Like three pieces of bamboo like so, this. So, you know, some of them are like seven wide. Okay, whatever, you cross them. And then all of a sudden, like they're getting more narrow and more narrow and more. And then they're like too wide. And then you're like, holy crap. like. My kids are trying to go over this. The waterfall's underneath them. It was, uh, it was awesome. But it's, but it's fun. It's, it's awesome. amazing. Yeah, it's love amazing. It. We love that kind of stuff. Definitely check out Kawasan Falls. So when you're done with Mobile, head down to Oslo. Ooh. That is where the whale shark tour is. One of the highlights of our trip to the Philippines, besides the Tarjir monkeys, was definitely the whale sharks. So that's another controversial thing because they do feed them. But for us, we with the kids, we figured we love for them to see nature and they probably won't be able to see them in the natural in na you know just out in the ocean so we figured we'd do that and let them make a choice if they thought it was a good idea because they feed them we fed them so it's all they about were hungry. They learning to be fed. <laughs> so it's all about our learning for our kids and they get to make their own choices if it's right and wrong so we asked them and we decided to do it and then afterwards they were like yeah they don't agree with it feeding them because they don't want them to be dependent on people feeding them. But they came so, to that conclusion on their own, right? And in the future, maybe they'll become conservationists and, and make a difference in the world. Yeah. But besides that part of it, it was amazing, epic, magical. Oh, Do you are... recommend it? Oh no, it's a I recommend call. it. I'm gonna be politically incorrect call. here and say, it's amazing. And see, being in the presence of a whale shark in front of you, mind blowing. So we actually spent maybe too much time in Oslo. So we spent two days. I say Oslo is good, in and out. Yeah. If you're gonna go there, there's really not much to do. Kind of 7-Eleven is the highlight of the town. There was um, that cool little island out in the middle of nowhere. Oh, so, so the Sumalin Islands, Sumalin, Sumalin Island. Island. <laughs> uh, we took a boat to, which is right across, you can see it. Right where the wheel tour And the reason is. why we went over there, because we're sitting around for an extra day going, what the heck are we going to do today? And we go, hey, there's an island out there. Let's go check that Can out. Can we go there? Anybody give us a boat ride out there? So. so we took a boat ride out there, and it was a really cool little day trip. Yeah, it's fun. Was if fun. you want to stay on that island, there's a hotel there that you have to stay at. So 
Um, if you don't stay in the hotel, then you can't explore the whole island. You just do the little sandbar. Right, that's cool though. But the sandbar was super cool. Now to leave Oslo and go over to Bohol. Bohol, we had to take a ferry across the open ocean for three hours. It wasn't even a ferry, it was like a fisherman's boat. It was like a long tail boat. So the only option is take a long tail boat across the ocean for three hours or backtrack for like 10 hours and take all these land routes and then take a ferry over. So we opted for the little bit more adventurous route. We read a lot of bad reviews online. We had a great experience. If so the water is rough, it's a bad ride. If the water's calm, it's not so bad. It's just an easy, quick route to get there. Gotta roll the dice. So we did, and it was fine. <laughs> it worked out good. Couple of splashes here and there, but it was great. Yeah. So Boho is another place on our list. What do we get to see in Boho? The Tarzier monkeys? <laughs> Chocolate, Chocolate Hills. Hills. We stayed on Panglo Island, which is a little bridge across from Bohol. That was cool. Um, we it was on really a lot cool. Of day trips there. We have Alona Beach. Oh, that was really nice. Which was really pretty. Nice it's kind of like a little stretch of restaurants and little happening out of, area. Out of most of the places that we went, I would say that area felt the most developed and yeah. ready for tourism, so to speak. Which they could... even had some vegetarian restaurants. Yes. We're vegetarian. Depending on what you're looking for. Yes. Right? So yeah, that's, that's definitely had the amenities that maybe uh, Westerners might so be used to. So let's touch on Tarzier monkeys. Oh my God, these little tiny little monkeys, so cute. There's two places you can see them. There's only two? Two sanctuaries, yes. And they, you, when you go there to see them, do not scream, do not, where are they? Because they are nocturnal creatures and they do not like loud noises during they the day. They say they will commit suicide. They will commit suicide. If they get startled or I don't even know what. So Maybe they're having a bad day or something. But. There's signs all over, please be quiet, please be quiet. Cause you're going obviously during the day to see them. And let me tell you, they are adorable. Amazing. They are probably about this big and it's hard to spot them because there's trees and they're wrapped around the tree. So they almost look just like a little ball, like a little bee's nest yeah. or something on the tree. But when you get close, you see their big eyes, their little mouth, their uh, knuckles. Oh my God. It's amazing. They are adorable. So what's another spot to definitely check out on the Philippines? Okay, another spot is Chocolate Hills. Chocolate Hills is actually really cool. Oh, that's cool. There's no chocolate in the hills, but it's definitely, they say they look like Hershey Kisses, I think. I'm gonna do a little research and see what it is. We'll put actually put it in the video. Where do you wanna put that video from? Let's put it there. So we know there's so many islands to explore in the Philippines. So if you have any suggestions and can add to this list, we would love to hear it. Because when we go back, we want to hit up as many places as we can. So when we go back to the Philippines, here's a list of places that we are definitely going to check out. Bantayan Island, which is north of Cebu and known for its blue water and white sandy beaches. Dumaguete is definitely a must-see. It is called the Maldives of the Philippines with its epic sandbar. Apo Island is one of the top diving and snorkeling spots in the Philippines, and you are guaranteed to see some sea turtles. Boracay Island is one of the most well-known spots in the Philippines, and we cannot wait to see its pristine beaches since it has been reopened. Siargao is the surfing capital of the Philippines, and an adventurer's paradise with its white sandy beaches and magical waterfalls. So that wraps up our list of some of the top things to see and do in the Philippines. There's so many more things that we need to see and do. So many more people that we need to meet and uh, so much more adventure to be had in the Philippines. Yes. And there's a motto that says it is more fun in the Philippines. And I can pretty much say that it was pretty fun in the Philippines. Thank you so much for watching all of our videos. If you want to see some more Philippines videos, we've got a whole list of, I don't even know how many Philippines videos. And we'll be putting out a few more coming up here in the next couple weeks. So whatever you do, get out there and Try something new. new! Subscribe, like, notifications, bells, all that great stuff. Instagram, Facebook. We love you guys. Have a great day. Thanks for watching our videos. It means the world to us. And uh, catch you on the next one. Bye.